This is 100 days of survival on a rover in a snowstorm. My team has prepared a hardcore survival in the harsh arctic circle, where the whole world is limited by a dangerous barrier. To expand my survival zone, I will need to complete tasks from the simplest to the most complex. If I can get to the green biome, then survival will be considered completed. I appeared inside a snowstorm. Around us, there's these wolves with red eyes, a certain amount of resources, and there I can see the rover. My survival began in a small square. There were snow walls on all sides that I couldn't get through. The first thing I decided to do was mine the only block of wood on this map. Already based on this factor, I understood that resources would be limited. We need to act very carefully so that these wolves don't get angry at us. Because we still can't get out of this zone, but I think the wolves will be able to pass through pretty easily. In the area of my survival, various bushes, twigs, and even pebbles were scattered all around. By collecting them, I could get starting items. You could knock out sticks from branches and pieces of cobblestone from pebbles and then turn this from four into a real block. I broke the only log, but this tree was beyond the border of the snowstorm, and I couldn't get it in any way. So all I could do was collect pieces of cobblestone, and then I would try to make myself a stone pickaxe. You've probably already noticed this message in the upper right corner of the screen. This message tells me the task that needs to be completed in order to expand the storm. At this point, I need to light the fire. Once I do this, the radius of my survival terrain will expand. And for example, the nearest expansion will allow me to reach the road. From pebbles, I finally made three cobblestones and my first pickaxe. If we had no problems with gravel, then we still need to look for iron. As you can see, the temperature is already at the limit, and we won't survive here for long without some kind of fire. Sooner or later, we'll simply turn into ice. Yes, there was also temperature in this survival, but I didn't have time to think and I just had to find iron quickly. While I was digging, I noted two facts for myself. First, it is much warmer in the cave than on the surface, and second, during the entire time I was looking for iron, I couldn't find a single single block of dirt. I found the iron, and the time has come for me to melt it down and finally make flint and steel. Oh, oh wait, yeah, let's go! The zone increased! Now we can go check out our rover! From a small area of less than one chunk, we now had access to an area of 50 by 50 blocks. Of course, the first thing that caught my eye was that rover that would play a key role in this survival. And besides this, there was also a station where I hoped to find many useful materials. Uh, now I have to fight this wolf! I have very little HP, guys! Whoa. Okay, guys, somehow out of panic, I simply avoided this wolf. He can't even jump yet. Oh, look, he dropped four leather! Okay. Okay, let's clean up this mess. Look at this station and this rover. It's just incredible. As you can see, the storm lags sometimes. Don't pay any attention to that. It's still there. Wow, the doors are opening. Okay, what I'm most interested in is seeing what's over there. To do that, I need to drive it a little bit forward and at the same time, check whether it's moving. I want to see what we have in the back of our rover. How do we even get there? So, okay. It turns out that we can go inside. There's computers and some instruments here. I don't know yet why we need this, but I think it's gonna be useful in the future. The rover was incredible and I really wanted to travel on it. But for now, the territory was very limited. So for now, I left the rover and went inside the building. Apparently, this is some kind of abandoned station. I think that we'll try to make our first base here because the snowstorm outside is very strong. What just happened? Did you guys see that? And I think that this is the main room. Oh, there's a furnace here. I think with the help of it, we'll probably be able to warm ourselves up. Because right now, the temperature here is 5 degrees. Which is not enough. We need to make it way warmer. Wild revolver. <laughs> what? Oh, it looks pretty cool. The only thing is that it only has one ammo. Gunpowder, string, sticks. Great. And one bandage. I'll, I'll keep it here for now. Besides this, I also found some food. Pretty good for a first day of survival. Oh. A book with a pen. This base was created for the harshest conditions of the Arctic, but unfortunately, everything has an expiration date. In order for the base to truly withstand the local weather, it needs to be upgraded. And as you can see from all sorts of ice, cobwebs, and the floor, it's pretty obvious. The night was gradually approaching. At night, the temperature will drop a lot. If I don't find a way to create heat inside this building, then most likely my survival will end on the first day. Having sorted out all the boxes in every corner of this place, I was finally able to find some wood and light the furnace for a while. Okay guys, I can warm up a little bit near this thing. Wait, what are those noises coming from outside? 
That sounds pretty bad. Day two, the sun even came out in the morning. The beauty from the shaders was simply off the charts. Look, wow, it turns out there is a clear sky. Not counting the fact that we still have these barriers in the form of a snowstorm, which we still can't get over. And this, wait, what is that? Is that a bear? Two bears? But they turned out to be friendly bears and didn't even attack me. There were grandiose plans for the coming days. First of all, I had to obtain more resources. This concerned, of course, coal and iron. I think that this station can be considered our first home, but it just needs to be well equipped. This will be my second task. Well, probably thirdly, before trying to expand the storm even further, I'll try to explore as much as possible of the area that is available to me now. And I'm sure that there'll be a lot of interesting things here. By the way, in this survival there's also a special menu where you can track all the tasks that we have completed or you can still complete. We have a menu like this. As you can see, we already accomplished something and we have three new achievements. Create warm clothes with immunity, tame a penguin, where can you even find it? Find and repair the antenna on the rover. For now, I decided to put the new tasks on the back burner. Let's get some resources first. Having mined a lot of coal and iron, I went back to the station to light the furnace. But not the usual furnace, but a modded one. Which made it possible to heat the entire room. While the temperature was rising, I decided to remove the excess cobwebs as well as the icicles. Now, the base seemed at least not so abandoned. Day 3. It started with me cutting down the only tree on our territory and no sapling fell from it. And also, despite the fact that the territory is small, I decided to take a ride on the rover because it seemed really cool to me. Day 4. Now, it was possible to see exactly what locations are on our territory. The first is a fairly deep cave. I haven't gone down there yet. The second is we still haven't explored the huge tower, but a part of it is still in the barrier. Well, and thirdly, there was also a small biome of penguins, and the penguins were quite different. Look guys, I found a flock of penguins! There's these small ones, and there's even huge ones! Oh, oh, oh my god! It's a pretty unfriendly penguin, guys! I wish I could figure out how to tame them, but for now, there's no answers yet. That same day, I decided to go to the very deep cave. I hope to find a lot of resources there. Well, guys, we have this small cave here. Now I'm gonna go down there. The only thing is, look, a new type of some mobs are there. I've never seen these before. However, I can easily get some coal here. It'll be very, very useful to us guys. Having dealt with the monsters, I mined almost a stack of coal. This was great and said that we definitely wouldn't freeze in the next couple of days. It really bothers me that I didn't find a single sapling and I also couldn't find a single block of dirt anywhere. And because of that, we can't grow food and wood is not an endless resource for us. I see a couple of trees that are outside the storm. And more than that, in that territory, look, there's even some ruins. But on this side, I can also see some houses. I thought it was very important to look at what's on the other side of the door. So, based on this, guys, I think that we need to hurry up with the completion of the new three tasks. This way, we can at least get wood. I really hope that the saplings will fall out, because in the literal sense of the word, I can't get far in this territory on a rover. Okay, I'm gonna climb up this tower right now. This is probably one of the last places in the area that I haven't yet been to. There's a chest here, okay. Backpack! Great, we now have a backpack and we can carry additional things with us. On day 6, I decided to do a little rearrangement of my base, removing everything that was unnecessary. Guys, there's really a coffee machine here with Tohich's mug in it. Like, what is it even doing here? In place of many decorative things, I decided to make a warehouse out of chests, place more furnaces, and in general use the space more efficiently. You'd be surprised what I found while I was decluttering my house. Under this sofa, there was a a secret trap door that led to the basement. What? How didn't I notice it earlier? What if there's some kind of polar geist or uh, an evil capybara? Cap Capybara! 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 Okay, th that's the lyrics, uh, whatever, let's go. There was a small warehouse inside. I found some bandages, bottles of water, some food supplies, as well as some wire for the rover, a machete, and some blocks, and even wooden spikes. Okay, well, look, there's really good amount of resources here. I'm super interested in the wire from my rover. Maybe I can screw it on somewhere and do something with it, I don't know. And the spikes are a really cool thing as well. I immediately decided to place the spikes on the street, because at night, as you remember, wolves often come near me. Besides, I don't know what other monsters are out at night, so it's better to somehow protect my base. I'm not sure how I can protect the base so that I can get out at night. This gave birth to a pretty cool idea in my head, but first I wanted to deal with the wire from the rover. Look, I completed the task. Communication lost. Find and repair the antenna on the rover. 
Awesome! Walking into the back of the rover, I saw something new. Look, I can open the monitor and it says SOS signals. No signals detected at this time. I don't know what this thing does now. Maybe in the future we'll be able to use it somehow. Day 7. Returning to my new idea, I wanted to create a patio for my entire base. Literally build a fence. Maybe in the future we'll be able to make a farm if we find dirt. And there's more space outside. Because the base seems to be cool, but the inside is a bit cramped. To make this fence, I'm gonna need a lot of stone. On day 7, I mined cobblestone and melted it into bricks. But on day 8, I finally made the fence. Now I want to make a small path to the exit and decorate this place as much as possible. On day 9, new wolves appeared, which I successfully dealt with, and now I had enough leather to make a full set of leather armor. That's it, guys. We now have leather armor. Now I hope that will freeze a lot less. The only thing I seem to have done is clothes, but I didn't complete the task for some reason. Apparently, worn clothes with immunity are something else, and I don't know how to make that yet. There was still two tasks left that I needed to complete to expand the territory. And one of these tasks was taming a penguin. I don't even know how to tame him. I don't even know what kind of mod adds them. But on the internet, I read that penguins eat fish. So, and I can make a fishing rod. Why don't we go fishing? This is a very interesting survival. I don't know what lies ahead of us. My team said that it would become more and more difficult over time. As I understand it, there are many different monsters that will be here in the future. So far, the only real danger are the wolves. After catching some fish, I want to tame a penguin. The most important thing is to understand that big penguins are not very friendly. But the small ones are friendly. Wait, I completed the task. That's it guys, I tamed the penguin, let's go. I named the penguin Ivan. Vanya, why not? We have lived in this snowstorm for 10 days and I haven't even had time to ride the rover yet. But I think everything will be ahead of us when we expand our snowstorm. Day 11. There was something unusual about this day. Some strange snowmen appeared outside. Okay guys, I don't even know if I should go there right now. I'm even afraid to go into my yard. I was thinking correctly, but I did the opposite. Yeah, oh, oh. They're not friendly at all! Okay, okay, that's it. Well, <laughs> I don't want to deal with them anymore. On day 12, I checked the onboard computer of my rover to see if there were any new signals there, but it was still empty. I also made a circle on the rover around the territory that I had. I really wanted to go for a ride. And then I went to a cave because there were never too many resources. I came out the cave only by the end of day 12. Surprisingly, there were the usual Minecraft mobs down there. Skeletons, creepers, zombies, and so on. I was even able to find a mineshaft, farm myself more string, and even find a trolley with watermelon seeds. But I still didn't have any dirt, so I couldn't even make a farm yet. On day 13, I looked through my entire base again, thinking that maybe I had missed some details. And yes, this turned out to be exactly the case. In the basement, there was a sewing table, and on which, as I understood, it was possible to make those very warm clothes. Look, there are two armor cells here. My leather one fits into one of them, which means that another cell is needed for the second armor. I think we'll try to make an iron one and see what comes out of it. Having melted down the iron and made myself full iron, I combined it with the leather and got a new armor with a purple message saying immunity. The third task was completed and the snowstorm instantly increased. Now our survival on the rover could finally begin. On day 14, the first thing I decided to do was to explore the trees. Yeah, no matter how strange it may sound, if you remember, we simply needed saplings and I was pretty lucky. Yeah, guys! These are saplings! I just dreamed about this more than anything. The only thing I realize now is that I actually can't plant the trees without any dirt. Uh, why me? The map became a lot bigger. Now there were entire dungeons to explore. It's also time to look at the new tasks that I need to complete to further expand our zone. Create a camping tent, grow the first crop, respond to two SOS signals. I think these three tasks sound pretty interesting. I was pretty pleased with the harvest task. This meant we would finally be able to find dirt in this territory. Otherwise, how will will we complete this task? I wanted to spend the coming days exploring the surrounding area as much as possible. And for this, I already had my favorite rover. Well guys, let's go. Or make our way where our eyes lead. We just need to cut through the snow. <clears throat> Oh, sorry. And here, by the way, there's all sorts of new mobs. I started finding some ammo in the loot. I even found a hunting rifle. By the way, I noticed that the world border now looks quite different. It would make a lot of sense to see how it looks now. I mean, technically, nothing has changed. Day 18, and it was pretty interesting. I decided to check the signals on the onboard computer. The coordinates were indicated. I decided to immediately go there. Wait, look, 
There's a guy up there, and there's wolves all around him. I think this is an NPC who needs to be saved. It's pretty clear why he's stuck on this iceberg. So, okay, there's one. Okay, a shield would actually be pretty nice. I need to craft it. Okay, that's it with the wolves. Thanks to our rover, we were able to find the help signal and find Vitka. Well, hello, Vitok. Over time, the rover will send more signals. After talking to Vitya, he said thank you very much for saving him, and also gave the coordinates of his chest, where he left a lot of useful things for me. And after that, he simply disappeared. Appeared. This is pretty cool, we'll constantly respond to these signals for help, because firstly, we'll save the NPC, and secondly, he'll probably receive some kind of reward. So, well, okay, let's go. Along the way, let's just stop by these ruins. Let's see, maybe there'll be... For sure there should be something interesting here. I'm really hoping to just finally find dirt. Okay, food, some kind of club, a watch, and a tennis racket. What? Why? The day turned out to be pretty eventful, and it was time to finally return home. Day 19, guys. Can you feel the fresh air? It's great. The very first thing I decided to do was to check the chest that Vita left for me. And you have no idea what was in it. This is... This is dirt! We finally found dirt! Vita, wherever you are, no matter how far the wind or the blizzard takes you, thank you. Thank you, just thank you. Guys, we finally found dirt. This meant two things. First, we could finally grow trees, and secondly, we could already make a farm. This is probably the best news in a long time. Let's first throw some coal into our fireplace. What I would like to say is now, yeah, there's no more problem with trees, and I think that we have some wheat seeds somewhere. Yeah, okay, that's it, guys. We'll finally complete the first task. And we have two more left to further increase the territory. For the rest of day 19, I was busy setting up a tree farm. And also an ordinary farm. And finally, I received the very coveted achievement. This is the kind of garden we have, guys. Surprisingly, in the Arctic, just outside where the temperature is like minus 20 or 30, everything is still growing. I mean, well, what do you want? It is Minecraft. Actually, I'm pretty surprised that everything is growing here. I planted potatoes, carrots, watermelon, and of course wheat. Let's see how quickly this all grows. Day 20. We still had two tasks left that needed to be completed in order to open up new territories. But at the same time, there was still a huge number of locations all around that we haven't yet explored. For example, a small village consisting of one, two, three, four, five, consisting of five houses. So friends, very carefully, some monster is attacking me. Oh, okay, look where I've arrived. This is actually very close to our base. These new mobs are running around, and by the way, here are also wolves. Okay, and crocodiles. Apparently, there's some kind of village here, and here's another house. Let's start with it. Let's try to find a lot of useful things here, and not stumble upon some strange monsters. There wasn't much loot in the first house. I found all sorts of cookies, sticks, gunpowder, string, and all the usual Minecraft loot. The more the barrier expanded, and the further we went, the more dangerous monsters there were all around. And even in my iron leather insulated armor, I received quite a lot of damage. Maybe in the future we can disassemble these houses into blocks. Although we already have a tree farm and maybe this might be too much. Yeah, that's it guys, I have no ammo left. As I approached the other houses, I came across the edge of the storm and went further to explore the rest of them. Silencer and a golden hook? Oh my god, I have a golden hook now, instead of my hand. Okay, I think it's pretty cool. So there's this skeleton here and some kind of note. Who is a wendigo? Two wanderers once tried to figure out this question in the TV series The Long Dark. Much just changed since then, but legends about the Wendigo continue to travel with the wind. Uh, guys, let's just skip the Wendigo this time. I can't say I'm not scared here. I continue to loot houses and finding cool items. For example, I found a pretty long scope for a rifle, as well as an inflatable flamingo. By the way, I also have a silencer for the rifle. We'll also put it on so that the monsters don't come running towards me. The main thing right now is that there's no scarecrows in this house. Only good loot and nothing else. And look, here the house is really, like really covered in snow. And yeah, there's nothing here. Great. We didn't come here. Let's keep going. I continue to explore the houses and monsters continue to attack me. And I'll tell you honestly, sometimes it's much easier to deal with a thousand predictable zombies than with one inconspicuous monster. This was my main problem. They appeared suddenly and completely out of nowhere. Okay, there's food here. This is really good. Having looted the last house, it was time to return home. I'm gonna tell you, we looted a really cool village. We found a lot of useful resources. We absolutely didn't find ammo, but on the other side, we just spent them. On the other hand, look at my inventory, it's just full. Now it's time to go home. 
On day 21, I decided to rest a little bit and finally start building. Our fence looked kind of flat and not very good, so first of all, I added a little relief to it. Placed some more wooden spikes and even made two small towers. If suddenly there are monsters nearby, then I think this will help me out a lot. There's also good news that the farm crops were finally starting to grow. Now our base could be called independent and pretty protected. 21 days have passed since the start of survival. The barriers in the form of a snowstorm, as was the case in the beginning of the video, were no longer visible. But the truth was that the barrier was still there, and in order to pass the survival, we need to expand it to the green zone. We can say that the green zone is where the snow biome ends. In the coming days, I was planning to further explore all the locations that are currently available to me, and look for options to expand the snowstorm. This survival is different from others in reality. First of all, I survive in a confined space, and secondly, I never know what will happen to the new territory that opens up to me. In short, it's pretty interesting. Let's sleep. Day 22. The weather was simply beautiful, but I needed to spend this day in the cave, since there can never be too many resources. In this survival, coal was especially needed, because thanks to it, we can maintain a good temperature inside our base. To keep warm between missions, our furnace needs a lot of coal. Day 23. Today could simply be called an invasion of snowmen. Some somehow even damaged my fence a little bit. It's just some kind of snowman apocalypse. We won't go beyond our fence today, but on the contrary, we'll just be harvesting our crops. I think we can even modernize the base a little bit. Today I want to go on new research. I decided to move along the barrier so that I don't miss anything. Okay, look, this is some kind of modern building. Probably the largest of those that I've seen on this map. And there's even a small highway here. We can only go to half of the house, but beyond that we cannot. In any way. Continuing to move along the barrier, I noticed some kind of tower. Look, tower! Let's try to go upstairs while there's no monsters. Tent! Wait, we have a task for a tent! I think this was it. This tent could be placed anywhere. So I decided to make my own second base. We'll locate it close to our main base. It'll be a one tent camp. Yeah, with one tent. I started a fire, built a fence, and set up the tent. What? Wait a minute. This is just the frame. I mean, it looks cool, but... Where's the tent? It turns out that the tent was not set up right away, and literally within a minute, the tent was completely assembled. Mission accomplished, guys. Great. We have the very last thing left. Because we grew a crop, we set up a tent, and we made a camp. Wait, what's left? Oh, to respond to the SOS signal. On day 25, I checked the onboard computer, and yes, another signal appeared. Guys, right now, rescuer Zeman is on his rover responding to a call. When I arrived, it turned out that these were the coordinates of a cave. One thing was clear. I had to go down. This cave is just a cave. All I need to do is find the stuck person and of course save him. Oh, there he is, there he is, there he is. Okay, now I just need to dig him out. Thank you for saving me, Seaman. I'll give you these items as gratitude. Good luck. The task was completed and the zone expanded. It is from this moment that the rover begins to play the most important role in this survival. Before this, you could just ride it, find signals for help, and save NPCs. But now, this is an integral part of this survival. Because the zone has increased to gigantic proportions, and now you can't cope here without a rover. Given that a lot, and I mean a lot of scary monsters are starting to spawn everywhere. On day 26, I went to see what had been added and changed. First of all, new dangerous monsters appeared. Now, I wouldn't really want to cross on foot through the snow and ice. And secondly, a new biomes appeared in the newly opened territories. This was the Thaw biome. It was located in some places on the map. Look, there's a crazy amount of dirt here. There's pots all and plenty of big trees growing. I think I'm gonna try and get as much dirt as possible. I don't know when we'll be able to do this again, and we'll probably be able to expand our farm. On day 27, I was working on the base, when suddenly a message appeared in chat. Attention, the threat of the appearance of a super mutant snowman, like I don't have enough bosses to deal with already. This message alarmed me quite a lot, because everything was just starting to go normally for us. On that same day, even more snowmen appeared around, and new monsters that had previously been behind barriers, but now they're even walking near our base. Oh, let's eat some watermelon for peace of mind. Having barely made it out again, I went to the border of the barrier. And what was my surprise when on the other side, I saw the green biome. Wait, if this is the last zone that we have left to open, then we're actually very, very close to surviving. On the other hand, there's more and more monsters all around. Of course, while I'm in the rover, everything is fine and there's no one around right now. But these monsters can one-tap me. And then my survival will just end. I continue to drive around and I even found another arctic station. Look, it's almost like mine. So what's inside? 
Look, there's also a basement here, but Tohi Smaga is no longer here. Let's quickly get everything out of here. We'll definitely take the medicine. And by the way, I have had bleeding here a couple of times, and bandages help out a lot. At the same time, I decided to look at the new tasks that became available to me. There were also three of them. Defeat the mutant snowman, turn on three generators at the bases, and find the heat crystal. Sounds pretty interesting. Of course, the mutant snowman scares me a little, but overall, I think we can try and handle it. I was especially I'm actually curious about the generators, because I was at one of the bases. Okay, there's a generator here, and we have exactly one like this in our base. Now I just need to understand how I can turn them on. Once I returned home, I remembered that we have bookshelves, and I could make an enchanting table. At night, I didn't go to bed, but went to the local cave, where I was able to find lava and get obsidian. I spent the whole night in the cave, and I finally found diamonds! On day 29, I finally decided to check out that same huge building, which had previously been behind the barrier. Well guys, we finally arrived to this building, and as you can see, there are monsters here too. But you and I are not losers either, right? I even enchanted the machete. I immediately understood that there would be a huge number of monsters here. But on the other hand, it was really interesting to find out what was in the building itself. What? What is that thing? What kind of poltergeist is that? So, okay, 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 calm down, calm down. I just love it when they turn invisible. But it's cool that we can just parkour it. What monsters and parkour have in common? Uh, nothing. Uh, 4 HP, 4 HP, guys. Oh, uh, let's eat quickly. So, wolves, I don't touch you, you don't touch me me. Let's go see these ghosts. Like I said, I expected there to be a lot of monsters. And on the other hand, it's enough for the monsters to beat me once, and that's where survival will completely end. Having dealt with the monsters, I began to check out the loot. Okay, so let's take a look at everything. Oh, fire extinguisher? Can I even use it? I think it's pretty useless. Helmet, iron, cool, and here I think is a dining room on the ground floor, or a restaurant. Oh, no, yes. Day 40. For quite a long time, I've been hiding from that huge snowman that comes out to hunt every 30 days. We need to wait for spring, he doesn't like warmth. If it's talking about the giant snowman, then I don't know, I'm scared. Going up to the second floor, I fell down, so I had to go up again. Oh, oh wow guys, I got scared. Oh, this is insane, I just got scared. Okay, let's put it on, why not? Do I look like a monster now? While passing the second floor, there was a parkour section, but I decided to leave it for later, and then the moment came when I needed to try and pass it. Well, here I am at the parkour- Um, okay. The parkour wasn't very difficult, but rather just a small test that allowed me to climb onto the roof. Well done, here's a gift for you. Heavy assault rifle, oh my god, that's sick. Okay, great, if this snowman attacks me, remember, I'm not afraid of you now. A message appeared in the chat that a super boss was about to spawn, and just three minutes later, a huge snowman appeared right in the middle of the map. Oh my god. So, okay, no matter how strong he is, I'll try to kill him. Come on, come on, carefully. I think I'll try to build small barricades for me. I just really hope he doesn't hit my rover, otherwise it's gonna be really bad. He's He's also starting to spawn his little snowman. Okay guys, I'm not going to lose now. Just a little bit more. Whew. We just killed a super hyper duper 100 meter mutant snowman. Sadly, he didn't drop anything, but we still completed the first task. Guys, this day 30 is just something. Again, I want to note that I don't know what's on the other side of the barrier, but I think the green biome is already there. So after completing two tasks, we can finally get out of here. So look, throughout the time in this world, I found several canisters. Five actually, in the building, in the loot, and I thought, maybe with the help of them, I can start the generator. First, let's try to turn on the generator in our base. So, I don't know whether it started or not, but my canister disappeared, so I think it started. Throughout day 31, I traveled around two more bases, which were located on the outskirts of the barrier. By clicking on each generator, I actually completed the task, which was just wonderful. There was only one more thing left. Yo guys, we lived here for 32 days, but it seemed like a whole life flew by. At the beginning of the survival, remember, I was so cold and there was no dirt. But now now I have everything here, and in fact, I don't know what will happen next. But now we'll try to complete the third task for this zone. It says that I need to find some kind of crystal, and I think I have an idea where I can find it. In the zone that opened, I saw the entrance to the ice caves, and I think this is where the crystal could be. Going down, I saw a lot of huge snow golems, but most likely these were yetis. But I wasn't sure at first. Oh wow, they hit hard. Yeah, of course, this is just my guess, but I really hope that the crystal is here, because I've checked everything all around. Around. 
If it's not here, I don't know where it could be. Wait, yeah, guys. Okay, that's it. That's it. That's it. The task is completed. I completed the third task, and instead of the snowstorm getting bigger, it just disappeared. The green biome was visible on the horizon. And yes, we were able to survive 100 days on a rover in a snowstorm. But the 100 days don't end here. During this video, we managed to do a lot. Build our base, escape from the cold, and extract resources that I thought were impossible to obtain. But ahead of you, there are two more episodes of survival on a rover in a completely new and different hardcore experience. If you don't want to miss the new episodes of the rover survival that I'm going to be posting every week, then be sure to subscribe to my channel. And that is all guys, Zeman was with you. Thank you for watching and good luck to everybody. Bye bye.